Welcome to a new vlog. Today we are taking a look at the Anang AN8009. This multimeter was uh, donated by a viewer of the channel who wanted to see a review of this meter. So if any of you would like to support the channel, donations are welcome through the PayPal link which you can find on the uh, channel homepage. In vlog 114 I reviewed the Anang 8008 and I said it's probably the best $25 multimeter that you can buy. If you haven't seen that video there will be a link on screen uh, right now so you can check it out. I would certainly uh, recommend watching that first so you can better understand the differences between the two models. The meter was delivered with this uh, carrying bag. And let's see what we got inside. We got the meter itself in uh, some bubble wrap. We got a uh, normal set of probes. A second set of probes with some uh, accessories, some crocodile clips. And a uh, temperature probe. But since these are low quality test leads, I think most people would uh, be better off with a lower price and just a single set of simple leads delivered. Then users can upgrade the test leads if they wish to. So here are the two meters uh, side by side. Uh, they're pretty much identical in uh, size and there are only a few difference, differences between these two. The first one I spot is the color difference uh, for the Anang uh, branding logo. I would say branding is something you want to get right across your range of multimeters because if a user gets this and uh, sees a different uh, color, the first thing he's going to think is did I got a genuine meter or a knockoff. In this case I'm pretty sure it's a genuine meter and we'll see that later when we take it apart. So what I said about the uh, 8008 still applies to, uh, to this as well. It's a 999,000 uh, uh, counts resolution. Um, it's good to have that because uh, you can get that extra digit when you're measuring uh, 8 volt for example. Well on a 6000 count meter you would only get 2 decimal points. On this one you get 3 decimal points. The 8009 is still true RMS, so you can measure signals up to 1 kHz. The uh, safety ratings uh, printed on the case are questionable, but then again, whoever buys this meter will hopefully not poke around uh, high energy circuits or use it in any kind of industrial environment. Since the meter is uh, exactly the same size, it has the same battery compartment with a metal threaded screw and uses the same uh, AAA batteries but note it does not come with batteries included in the uh, package. The LCD certainly looks to be the same. We got the same nice big digits and good viewing angles with a white backlight which looks nice but uh, it seems to be a different uh, color temperature on the 8009 so they must have changed the LEDs they were using for a uh, backlight. One thing that uh, has uh, also changed is the backlight uh, timeout. On the 8008 it was something like 15 seconds while on the newer 8009 they have adjusted that to 2 minutes. So that's something I personally appreciate and I'm sure other people will appreciate as well because you usually need the backlight for at least a minute to be on. With the 8008 people complained about the maxi maximum 10 mega ohm resistance range. Now we have one extra range up to 100 mega ohm on the 8009. I never find myself measuring these kind of values but it's good to know the range is there for those who need it. They have removed the uh, square wave output from the 8009 which was replaced by the NCV test. Some people might have used the square wave output, others may not, but NCV stands for non-contact voltage and it should be useful for detecting if you have voltage through wire or maybe even detecting the position of live wires through walls. In this particular model I don't think it's uh, that sensitive to detect the position of live wires through walls 
at least it doesn't work on the walls I've tested with but it certainly picks up the live wires and it goes crazy when I place it uh, near a live socket. We also get an extra function, the temperature measurement, hence the included thermocouple probe. I think that's a very useful function that every multimeter should have, so I'm glad they added it to this model. We can select between uh, Celsius and uh, Fahrenheit, however the resolution is just 1 degree Celsius, so no decimal points. Uh, a 0.1 degree C resolution is helpful to see uh, short term what kind of variations you get. Is the temperature going up or down? We still uh, don't get the uh, lower current ranges like 10 milliamps or 100 milliamps, which uh, would be useful in some cases. So in terms of current measurement, uh, the ranges are identical to the 8008, just 1 amp and a 10 amp range. The rotary switch is something that uh, people care about, especially people who have better, more expensive multimeters and can compare to them. Both meters here perform the same. It's a cheap rotary switch feeling. Uh, the detents are kind of soft and it's very easy to place the switch in between the detents and it will stay there. Since I don't have any voltage standards here in my lab, I will just use a bench power supply and compare a few voltage measurements with my uh, Agilent 34401 6.5 digit multimeter. That should give us a rough idea on the accuracy of uh, this new Anang uh, meter. So right now we're measuring this uh, 5 volt uh, voltage and uh, the Agilent is showing 5.093. The two Anangs, uh, one of them, the 8008, is showing uh, approximately the same voltage while the 8009 is a bit low, it's just showing a 5.090. Let's try also 3.3 volts. Yeah, we're practically in the same um, uh, measurement here. 3.302 on the Agilent, 3.301 uh, on the Anang. So pretty good results. Let's try uh, 12 volts. 12.05 on the Agilent, 12.04 on the Anang. Let's try uh, 24 volts. 24.05. Yeah, that's pretty close. Let me show you what I was uh, saying earlier. Let's uh, try to measure an 8 volt um, signal. There you go. Uh, if you're measuring 8.3 volts, you get the um, three decimal points here, while on a 6000 count meter, you would only get uh, two decimal points. So that's the advantage of uh, having a, a 10,000 count meter like this one. And now I think it's time for a teardown to see if there are any differences inside. I expect these to be identical, maybe just a few components uh, moved around for optimization, but the design should be exactly the same and all of these changes should be in uh, software. So let me pause for a moment while I take these two apart. So here are the two meters uh, side by side, the 8008 on the left and the 8009 on the right. Uh, they look almost identical. Uh, the only changes I could see are on this uh, top side. They removed some of the ground plane to make room for the NCV detection antenna, which is uh, this one right here. And then I can see uh, some changes in the bottom side, also in the ground plane. They seem to have extended the ground fill on this area. I'm not sure why. But other than that, uh, I really can't see any other changes because those changes are purely software and are stored in the EEPROM for the uh, ASIC of the multimeter. So uh, there are all your changes. You could basically implement uh, those changes, well, except for the NCV functions. 
just by reprogramming the EEPROM in the 8008. And that's a uh, usual hacking method for multimeters. You hack the EEPROM holding the uh, configuration values for the multimeter chipset used, and then you change the uh, ranges or the behavior of your multimeter just by modifying the EEPROM. Also, another uh, change they made with the 8009, they removed the, the switch three pads from the uh, PCB, which were to the right of the um, blob, right in that area. So in the end, I would say this new 8009 model is just as good as the AN8008, and they are both great beginner multimeters, but they can also be good for the more advanced user who better understands their limitations. My recommendation is to take a look at the differences between the two and choose based on your needs. Ask yourself, do I need the temperature measurements? Do I need the extra resistance range? Or do I need the square wave output? Better yet, uh, and this is what I would do if you can afford it, uh, get both models to have all of those uh, functions combined uh, when you will uh, need them. Also, it's good to have two multimeters because you can measure both voltage and current at the same time. So I hope you enjoyed the, this uh, review. Don't forget to check out the links in the description. These links help to fund my uh, activity and keep the channel going. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time.